And this title is a clickbait. I'm not going to talk about the simplest gem you'll ever use. Uh, I will be talking about the gem that I created some time ago. And it is pretty short, but probably not the shortest one. Uh, so recently I was checking what are the actually simplest gems that I'm using around. And I found a few that are, I, I found plenty of gems that are below 1,000 lines of code. Uh, surprisingly, most of them were related to JSON. I don't know why. Uh, so one of them is Active Support JSON Encoder, which fixes some issues that appeared in Rails after they changed. Uh, after I think they changed the library that was that was encoding uh, encoding JSON. So this gem in 200 lines of code provides you some functionality. Basically, they fix what they broke. Then you got another one, which is Rails Pass uh, Patch JSON Encode, which fixes JSON in Rails as well, but it fixes the performance. So this gem provides you some value in 35 lines of code. And then the last one, the really simplest gem that I found, and this is the simplest gem that I'm using, is called OJ Mini JSON, and it provides you some value in 10 lines of code. However, this gem, the only thing that it does is that it replaces the JSON li library that you use with the optimized JSON, which is written in C and makes it way faster. So you don't need to change anything in your in your application. You just load this gem, and it and it replaces the library. So 10 lines of code, and you get the uh, much better JSON speed. So the gem that I wrote is called Simple Operation, and its version that I wrote 10 months ago had 33 lines. And last night I added two new features, and now it's crazy: 40 lines of code, 42 lines of code. Uh, so it is not the simplest gem that you can ever use, but it's pretty close. This gem, uh, as its name suggests, it's, it implements operations. So what I call operations is sometimes called actions or services, and these are basically classes that allow you uh, allow you to perform set, uh, some set of steps, some set of uh, of actions. So as I see it, is I treat this operation as kind of a function. So it has input and it has output. I provide parameters and I get a result. So I build a class that behaves like a standard function. And I do it because it might be a bit more complicated than, than a normal function. I want to have some private methods in, in that class. So that's why I use a separate class to perform a single operation. This class has one public method, except for 50 that it has because it's Ruby class, and every Ruby class has like 50 public methods. But I'm adding just one public method, and its name is call, and I will explain later why. I name these classes with verbs, so I don't call this class user creator, or I don't call this class checkout, I just call it create user or make a booking. And what I try to do with these classes is to prevent it from keeping any state. So you use it as a function. It doesn't hold anything inside. You have input, output, and whatever happens between is not available later. So I will show you an example of what I do. Example is that I want to select valid records from an array of records that I provide. So I create a new class that is called select valid records. It inherits from the new uh, from my class simple operation .new. And simple operation .new with some parameter will return you will return you a class. So this is if you use struct class in Ruby, you will find it very similar. Then I will, then I define the method call, the only public method that I define. And whatever happens next is just private. It's just for the for the purpose of of running this one method call. And this is the whole class. This class behaves like a function. And I call it this way, I validate records, dot, and then I provide parameters in parentheses. So it, uh, this syntax might seem quite, quite uh, weird to you, because it is not very common. Uh, first, because normally you, when you create object, you do class.new. And then, because here, after a dot, you've got parentheses right away. You don't have the name of the function. So validate records. This class, simple operation, defines a call method on a class level. That's why when you when you do this, you actually what you call is validate records .call. And Ruby has this nice native uh, syntax sugar that when you have method called call, you don't need to provide its name. You just put dot and then uh, and then you use parentheses. 
What's interesting is that this class behaves exactly the same way, way as proc or lambda. So I find it interesting because I can provide either lambda, I can provide block of code, or I can provide this class, and it, it, it behaves exactly the same way. You just put dot .call and it calls it as a function. Now, another feature that I have is that sometimes you need to, you need to return something more advanced than just a simple value. So usually in such case, uh, you can use multiple return, so you can like return 1, 2, 3, but I don't find it really convenient because then record, uh, the order really matters. So you need to remember what is the order of, uh, of arguments, order of, uh, of results that this, that this function gives you. So that's why in simple operation, on the class level, you have method called result, where you define what will be uh, what you will later return. And then in, a, in my method call, instead of giving return in the end, I call result and I put, the, uh, I put their values that I want to return. So now, instead of having just a simple, uh, a simple array as a, as, a re as a result of this function, you've got a struct that has named fields. So it's much more convenient than having multiple values returned uh, in, in specific order. Now, let me show you the code of this gem. Okay. Okay, cool. So, the whole gem consists, except for like, you know, all these gem spec license, etc. It has it has just three files. One of them is version, so it does almost nothing. One file is extension that I will, uh, I just added for fun and I will explain you in a moment. And now this is the whole gem. This is everything, uh, it, this is its whole body. Let me just make it bigger. Uh, is it enough for everyone to read in the back? <coughs> no? Okay. Uh, it doesn't become bigger than. Why? Now, better? Can you read it now or still to larger? Even larger. Now? Good? Okay, cool. Uh, so so this is just like 37 lines of code here. So there are a few Ruby tricks that I used in this gem and I wanted to share with you. Some of them I already presented a few months ago on the like five random Ruby tips. So first thing here is what I do in a simple operation is that I override the method self.new. Uh, what it does is that when you call simple operation.new, it doesn't actually return simple operation. It returns something different. So for example, uh, let me show you here. For example, if you hate your coworkers, you can do something like this: class hash dev self dot new return an array. <laughs> <laughs> and now, if I do hash dot new, it returns an array. And then you will see them banging on the on the wall. So yeah, uh, so this is the way uh, that struct also works, and this is the way that my gem simple operation works. So it returns you a different class uh, than, than the simple operation. Now what I do is that, uh, I, what I return is the class new, so I return class object. So this is alternative syntax for creating a class in Ruby. So you've got the class and then the name and, uh, and this one. This one is way slower, it's like five times slower, but way, uh, you don't define class on every call of your function, you just do it usually on the startup of your application. So this speed doesn't really matter. But what it does is that you can define a class inside, a, inside some method, inside the body of a method. You can't do it with the native class syntax unless you use the eval method. So now I'm defining a class. This class takes first, it evaluates the block. So whatever I do in simple operation inside the class will be evaluated and added to this new class. Then, class evil also can take string as argument. 
So I couldn't provide this code as a native code. I had to use the string because I, uh, as you see, I have the list of arguments with nils. So it's a string, so I just embed this string here. And whatever I put here is later interpreted as Ruby code. The next thing is perform method, which I added here just for the purpose of compatibility with something like delay job. So I often use this in the background and just because I didn't want to write this method perform myself all the time, I just added it here. And then you've got, uh, then you've got a few private methods. So first is all at, uh, the at reader with the arguments. I add it as a private because I don't want people to use this from the outside of the class. This class is supposed to work as a function. The only way to reach it should be via the call method. And then, this thing, uh, result. So first result is the class method with self, and it basically defines the structure. So you provide the arguments there, and it creates a new struct, a new class that will be representing later the result that you return from the function. And the second one is with the same name, but it's an instance method. It's not a class method anymore. It basically finds this result class that I defined above, and it returns instance of it. Uh, I did it via this instance variable get, and this is because I didn't uh, I didn't want to make this public once again, and I didn't want uh, I didn't want to write any method that returns it uh, outside of it. So I just used instance variable get, and that's actually all the code that that is here. The only thing left is the extension file which overrides, which adds the new method uh, to kernel module. So kernel module is, uh, is basically everywhere uh, in any of your Ruby applications you've got included kernel module. So now you can call something like, uh, let me just, new method to a constant which becomes a new class then. So this is another thing that uh, I think it's a very neat but not very popular Ruby syntax. And the last thing that I do is that I use dot and then parentheses instead of calling the call method with its name. Uh, if you're interested in it, the, the gem is, is on GitHub. I've been using it for I don't know, I'm almost a year, and I use it in all my Ruby applications just because this pattern that I'm using is so common. It is somehow related to Trailblazer library, if you've heard about it. It's like a architecture on top of Ruby on Rails. Uh, Nick has this whole set of Ruby gems that he uses 
to facilitate his work with Ruby on Rails, and one of these gems is called Operation, and it's somehow similar but a bit more complicated than the concept that I'm using. Uh, I think that's it. If you're interested in such stuff, we're hiring at Caligo, we're hiring Ruby and Erlang and Elixir developers. And if you have any questions now, don't hesitate to ask. No questions? Okay, cool. Thank you very much.